Hey guys, welcome back to the Be Real Podcast. Today I have my good friend and boss, Jonathan Bodner, and we're gonna be talking about the definition of success and some keys to growing a business. You're also gonna get to hear a story of how he actually went from living in a car to owning his own businesses. I really hope you guys enjoy the podcast. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel. It's free, would really help me out. I'd really appreciate it. But without any further ado, here's the Be Real Podcast. Let's just be real, bro. <laughs> Obviously, a lot that I want to get like talk about, but what I do want to ask you as an icebreaker is what the crap is up with the elephants? Why do you love elephants so much? So I knew you were going to ask me that, and I tried thinking. <laughs> I tried like thinking about some sort of, you know, deep dark past or something like that, and I couldn't. I couldn't come up with anything, but. um I, the answer is I have no idea. So when I was um, when I was younger, I think my first toy was a uh, little blue elephant with orange um, feet. I don't know what you want to call them. Yeah. And uh, uh, paws are they called? Paul paws <laughs> dogs like puppy paws. Um, and so I don't know. I've had that for my entire life, and uh, I don't know. Like I I just people gave me elephants. I start collecting elephants. Um. I have elephants from all over the world in my house. And, yeah. uh, um, you know, it's kind of cool because later in life I Googled, like, you know, just fun facts about elephants because I kind of somebody asked me that a couple years back. And I was yeah. like, I don't know why I like it. <laughs> You're like, I got to have a real elephant. Yeah, I was like, I got to have a reason. <laughs> but, you know, what I found, it was really cool, is um, elephants, their family bonds are the ex- – like blood family is the exact same bond in an elephant as adopted family. And so, oh, you know, yeah. it, it, which You're really have to explain that here in a little bit really spoke to me, but we'll, we'll dig into that later. I guess. Yeah. Okay. So, so then later on in life, that's what you were like, oh shoot. Yeah. It, I don't know, man. It just kind of, honestly, it, it was uh, representative of my life and I was very much a community child and I was raised mm-hmm. by a lot of different families and, you know, yeah. we can chat about that later, but um, I think that let's, let's chat about just, it now. All right, dig right in, <laughs> jump right in. Jump right, let's just be real, bro. All right, let's be, there you go, be real. Uh, okay, so what what was it about the elephant? You said that their like relationship is a lot like of an adopted type of thing. Um, yeah, so, so what, is that, what does that mean or what's that look like? Scientifically, the bond between um, an elephant child and um, like if it's a blood child, um, yeah. the mother is the, uh, the head of the family with elephants and um, uh, the bond that she has with her own child and another, um, like another elephant's child, is the exact same. So they, when they're adopted oh, wow. into the family, like they're actually adopted into the family, and like, um, you know, not is that just a an archetype of our relationship with Christ and like our life, you know, as Christians? But you know, it was very, um, uh, it was a mirror of my life as well. And that was why it was so interesting to me to kind of find that out because, you know, when I, um, uh, in high school, I actually um, kind of moved out uh, slash just didn't move and my mom moved. And um, uh, I it was raised by, you know, just plethora of families because wow. they like, you know, when my mom was, uh, her and the rest of my siblings were moving up north and, uh you know, I was like, I don't want to move up north. And so How she, old were you? I was, this was a uh, senior year in high school. And so. <laughs> and you just said, I'm not moving. I just said, I'm not moving. And. Uh, Bro, my Mexican parents would have beat the crap <laughs> out of it. <him. laughs> yeah. They're like, okay, you don't have to move. I'll move you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just like, I was like, I like my friends. I like my life. At the time I had started a small ministry in uh, my high school. And I was like, I don't want to just uproot all of this. And yeah. um, and so I uh, I lived out of my car for a really long time. Yeah. And uh, there was a time that my car broke down and I didn't have a car to live out of. And uh, and so a lot of um, a lot of families, you know, I felt like in that time, uh, I felt like God had told me to give up my family and let them go and put them in the, his hands. And uh, there was a lot going on with my family. My parents had gotten divorced and you know, uh, I have a lot of siblings, and so there's quite a bit of drama there. And um, a lot was going on, and uh, I felt like God was like, just give them to me. And, wow. you know, and it's funny because in the Bible it says that God, you know, what you give to God, God gives back tenfold. And uh, I could count ten families minimum 
that helped raise me and uh you know in that period of my life like really took care of me took me in bought me clothes bought me food slept on couches you know like yeah. it, it, plenty of nights um and oh, wow, uh amazing yeah so very much community child so the whole elephant you know parallel like really speaks to me about like being adopted because yeah, I yeah. feel very I feel like some of these families are much closer to me than my real family is and so wow dude that's crazy so whenever your parents split did that I'm assuming that affected you very much so um I don't think when you're there you know I don't you, think you, you realize, realize what it's doing and how it's affecting you mm -hmm. and um I don't know man it was like I don't have a lot of memories before I was like 12 or 13. And so, and my parents got divorced when I was 13. And so, you know, like there was, uh, yeah, there's just not a lot of memories there before that time period. And so what I have after that time period was just a lot of like family issues, like just constant, like, you know, moving around people, you know, siblings leaving like the whole nine yards. And so at the end of the day, I think that, you know, whatever trauma that that caused or whatever, you know, I mean, everybody's parents get divorced, you know, it's like, it's not a huge Sucks thing anymore. And say, oh yeah, uh, dude, what a depressing like thing to realize is that marriages just fail constantly, you know, and, uh, and kids have to take the brunt of that. Um, and you know, the fact that you have to choose between a mom and a dad, like no child should have to choose between their yeah. parents. Like that's that's horrible. Yeah, but. yeah, dude, that's intense. Because obviously. obviously, you know, given my situation right now, that that always hits deep. Yeah, like when I run into someone that's like been through that and sure. stuff. And that's why I'm always like, like I told you the other day at the gym, like I'm still trying. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like yeah. at the end of the day, I may have not done everything perfectly, yeah. even while waiting. Sure. But it's like still trying because of that reason. Because yeah. I know that there is a lot that gets put on on the child now you know oh, like yeah, we took our yeah. daughter and she's like got diagnosed with like severe anxiety she's eight you should have no anxiety when you're eight you know what i mean it should just be like Crazy. life is great yeah. you watch yep. disney plus <laughs> <laughs> run around and play and just yeah. be a kid and have that opportunity to be a kid and i think that that's what you know divorce really does to a lot of uh children is it robs them of their childhood because at the end of the day that like that innocence and that covering that was there you know that paternal covering is now gone and you know for me it was very much i was the um i was the middle child and so i was actually pinned against my parents quite a bit yeah. and uh, by one or the other and so there were a lot of moments um i mean that you know any kid goes through a lot of that stuff and a lot of that traumatic uh experiences but i think that you know at the end of the day it stole a lot of the you know, kid like, you know, innocence out of me. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, I think that that comes out quite a bit um, in how I live my life. And I think that God uses that. He uses every single thing for good. And I believe that, you know, I approach everything with the child or like a childlike mindset and a childlike faith because children think simplistically. Yeah. They think, you know, um, uh, the fastest route to reason, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I believe, like, you know, God definitely used that. But. Yeah. It's cool to hear kind of like what you were saying just now and then knowing you personally because um, like if we're being honest, divorce happens when somebody stops trying. Hmm. Someone someone, someone on the other side gives up and stops trying um, and quits essentially is what it is. Like to me, it's like you, you just tapped out. We could, I could go a, a thousand rounds, but you tapped out. You know what I mean? Like if you're in a fight. Um and to see that your characteristic now is the opposite of that. You don't tap out. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you, yeah. you don't quit. Whether that's in that's a business from what I've seen, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. whether that's in in new ideas, new innovations, sure. new new things, not just to help people, but yeah. to produce something. Like you just don't quit. Do you think maybe even without thinking uh, like subconsciously, like that – helped you become that person to where you're like i'm not i'm never going to give up in anything that i do i think um there are a few things that help people get to that place um i think hunger is a huge thing that gets people to that place and i think the divorce was a result of you know where i ended up and you know especially like the times where i you know was living out of my car and i was you know um couch hopping and just all of this stuff which you know is a phenomenal upgrade to where a lot of people are in life yeah. but like 
you know, being in that place, like getting, you know, having this perfect little family and, you know, all this stuff. And then just like it all getting rooted out under you and just kind of like that drastic change. And there were moments where like I was very hungry physically, you know, and I think that that hunger produced in me um, a hunger for God and God's voice and um, so good. and success, yeah. you know, to be successful at what I do mm-hmm. and to not, you know, like you said, just not back down and not, you know, give up and not give in to, you know, like just laziness because at the end of the day, it's very easy, you know, um, kind of off topic, but uh, early on in my childhood, I kind of vowed to myself that I would never play video games yeah. because I, wow. I watched my brothers just destroy their lives on video games and wow. just that. And, you know, I understand that, you know, there's a, everything in moderation, mm-hmm. but to me, I was like, I see how they are and I don't want to be that. Yeah. And that laziness almost, yeah. you know, you can't physically like get your, you're addicted to that constant, you know, mm-hmm. um, uh, entertainment and you can't pull your mind out of that. And to me, I was like, I never want my mind to be captive to anything, Wow. you know? And how old were you when you decided that? Um, that would have probably been about 14. Dang. Yeah. So when kids are in their prime of playing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and I had uh, some older brothers too, but yeah, it was, yeah. Dang, dude. That's a pretty mature decision to make at that age to be like, uh-uh. But, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> some days I'm like, man, that looks fun. <laughs> or you could be streaming right now and making a lot of money. Uh, There's yeah, a lot that's of, true. A lot of these kids that their parents were like, you need to go outside and play. They're like, keep playing video games now because you're making us a lot of money. It's true, man. <laughs> it's true. But we, uh, you know, we, we went outside and all we ever did was, um, you know, looking back, I'm not sure how healthy of a family situation this was, but... Uh, so my mom or my older siblings would end up like locking the doors to the house yeah. and uh, we would just be forced to play outside all day, like all day long. And so, and we had acres of woods Dude, when I was uh, younger. My parents used to do that when they, yeah. when they smashed. <laughs> you know, it's so <laughs> funny because- door, And then they would peek out the blinds because we'd be playing on the porch. That's and then funny, we could dude. hear them in there, like doing the dirty. Yeah, and we're just like, so you guys just lock us out, and then we we're like, yeah. well, okay. See, as an adult, you kind of look at it and you're like, wait a minute. That's that's probably like case for CPS, at, you know, nowadays. Yeah. But like back then, it, it you yeah. know, it was nothing. And so we would, I mean, we would find, you know, we made our own like bows and arrows and our own like swords, that's and awesome. we were nerds, bro. That's we awesome. were nerds. We were LARPing before people knew what LARPing was. <laughs> <laughs> you guys Real life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome so it drove you to a place where you just wanted to be successful what it, what does that mean in your mind because that's good that's question a different that's a different mindset in everybody's mind i think that's a very good question um i think that you know a lot of people attach success to money and and money does a lot like money is a tool and it you know um even jesus said you know you have to give to caesar what caesar is first mm-hmm. and you know um uh I think that success is quite a bit more than money though. And um, for me, you know, my first driving factor behind like, I'm going to make some money and I'm going to be successful Mm -hmm. was like um, seeing my younger siblings, you know, like go without a meal or something like that. And, uh, you know, to me, I was like, my family will never, ever want for anything you know what i mean like they'll work for it and they'll fight for it but they'll never want for anything like they'll never go hungry they'll never like that to me is like the number one you know kind of goal that i set out for and from there i think god really shaped it and you know did what he needed to do with the vision and um and to answer your question i really think that um success is 100 percent about people Mm -hmm. there's there's only one thing in this life that that matters it's the best currency out there the the only thing think about it you can't take you can't take your laptop you can't take coffee you can't take microphones you can't take anything with you you can't take money you can take people yeah people are all that matters and you know you and I were kind of talking about that the other day too like you know the importance of treating the janitor the same that you treat the CEO because yeah. and that that same level of respect because a person is a person you know yeah. Dr Seuss as cheesy as it was it's hundred percent true like a yeah. person is a person no matter how small. You know, and at the end of the day, like when you walk around seeing people and not seeing dollar signs, not seeing, you know, like you've reached a level of success because you're thinking outside the box. And, you know, when you see a person, you ask, what can I do for that person? Like not 
how can that person serve me? Yeah. But what is it that I can do? And what's inside of me? What has God given me that I can like, I can serve them with? Yeah. What What can I bring to them? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what can I add to their story and their experience and all of that? So, exactly. That's kind of what drove me to to start this podcast because I'm like, I love talking to people. I love it, dude. <laughs> you, know you know what I mean? I love it. There's and, some amazing stories, you know, and people, mm -hmm. when you crack that egg open and you really get into what made them them yeah. and why they're doing the things that they're doing, like yeah. uh, that to me is, that fascinates yeah. me. I mean, I mean, just think about it like years down the road when you're a millionaire, multimillionaire, you know what I'm saying? With the, all your businesses and <laughs> God people are like, <laughs> and people are like, oh, you know, this white guy has got it all, da 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 but then they see your podcast, they come across your podcast and they hear the, the backstory behind the real stuff that you went through. It's just, it changes everything. People don't. It makes, it makes people realize, realize like, I can do it too. Yeah. People don't see it, man. They don't see it. They think, you know, there's a lot of people that see business and they think it's just easy. You know, they see the car, they see whatever, you know, they see trips to Hawaii, they see whatever and they're like, Oh wow! Like you know, you got the life. Like you know, you. Yeah. you and I, th I think the first thing is number one: you have no idea what somebody goes through every single day. You have exactly. No clue. You have no idea what price they paid to get where they're at. Yeah. And um, and what price they're paying on a yeah. daily yeah. basis. You know, it's like mm -hmm. you think that every you think that somebody's arrived, but you have no idea what they're actually you know like working yeah. through and what they're trying to solve. Yeah. And you know, it's funny because. The people that choose to keep going in face of everybody telling them they're making the wrong decisions, those are the world changers. You know, yeah. you asked, um, on one of your podcasts, you asked like, uh, you know, if you could go to lunch with one person and like, you know, I when I listen to podcasts, um, I always answer the questions, you know, it's like, listen to a radio station and they're like, <laughs> do you like? And you're like, yes, you know? And uh, I answered the question, I was like, well, Elon Musk. And nobody knows Nobody knows what Elon Musk went through. Yeah. The guy's a genius. The guy yeah. is like his efforts, like nobody in the history of America yeah. has attempted to combat or compete with NASA. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody. Think day. about, <laughs> think about like government is the only organization that's like, oh, we can go to the stars. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what? Mm -hmm. He's like, wait a minute, let well, me privatize this. <laughs> let, me, let me show you what capitalism does. And so- yeah. But like everybody sees like Tesla and SpaceX and oh, he's a millionaire, you know, and even PayPal when, you know, he built yeah. SpaceX and Tesla on the money he sold PayPal with and all this stuff. He, he was abused as a kid in South Africa. He was like his, he was starved multiple times. He came to America, to New York with nothing. Like him and his brother had a hundred bucks in their pockets a piece. Wow. And it's like- I didn't know any of that. No. But you look at him, you're, oh, yeah. Elon Musk got the life, you know, he's, yeah. you don't know, man. Yeah. Well, that is because yeah. anyone who's been through something hard works harder Yeah. in, in whatever that's in. It's right. kind of like I told you the other day at the gym, like what I told my wife, I was like, what you did to me was the best thing yeah. that could have happened to me because yeah. it made me work 10 times harder on myself Good. than I think I ever would have. And what you yeah. went through mm -hmm. was probably the best thing that could happen oh, sure. to you. Sure. You know, because even though it may have crushed you, yeah. like the example they use at church all the time, in order to get the oil out of an olive, it's you true, gotta man. crush it. It's in true. Order, in order to get make wine, you gotta crush the grapes. I, and then you gotta yeah. put them in isolation and let them ferment. I don't think I like, ever, bro, that's so true, because I don't think I ever would have even, you know, like even touched business if I hadn't struggled the way I struggled, like going from, you know, like high school to like couch hopping to like never really feeling like you have a home, you know, and then Jeez. like going all the way to like, like trying to pay your way through college and like just all the walls that like you hit are what really gets you to the point where you're like, I don't want to hit that wall again. Yeah. You know, you just hit that same, like this same, oh, never enough money, never enough money, never enough money. And it's like, you wonder why that is? Because you're addicted to hitting the same wall over and over and wow, over again. That's interesting. And like, Elaborate on that. <laughs> that's a that's a really good, unique thought that I've I, heard before. I think a lot of people, um, I think they're scared of money first mm -hmm. off. And I think, you know, 
um, I think that money becomes their biggest hurdle because all they've done in their entire lives is think of money with a negative mindset, which is that wall that they keep smashing into. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, you know, oh, money means bills. Money means having to pay someone back. Money means never having enough money. And like oh, wow. the love of money is the root of all evil, but the Bible doesn't say that in the enjoyment of money isn't is a root of all evil and at yeah. the end of the day the problem is is that your perspective has to change yeah. yeah you have to retrain your brain your brain has been wired to see money whether you think you do or not it is a negative thing in your mind do you really think that you will find success in anything yeah. if it's a negative perspective of that thing you know what i mean like and if that if it's something that is required to get to your next level which you know money isn't everything but Money does a lot, you know, like you saw this week in, you yeah. know, in our company, we, we're able to, you know, we're feeding hundreds of people. We're, you know, giving yeah. out hundreds of care packets, paying rent, like yeah. all of that, that requires money yeah. and it requires a level of, you know, like a pastor always says radical faith, you know, like yeah. um, scary faith, yeah. because at the end of the day, it's like, you have to separate yourself from something and realize that, Hey buddy, money doesn't actually exist. It's yeah. ones and zeros in a bank account. And yeah. the only reason it's there is for a tool. And you can either spend it or you yeah. can multiply it. Yeah, that's really good. You can use it to build or you can use it to tear yourself down. Yeah, like it's true. Either way. But you have to first learn how to not hate money. Yeah. Because the Bible never said anything about hating it. Yeah. And the thing is, is when you hate making money, you hate progression. And at the end of the day, like, you know, if your life is really going to be about people and about yeah. helping people and loving people, you can't hate people. Yeah. You know, you can't, you can't hate something that's going to get you, you know, somewhere yeah. else. So you got to love them enough that you're willing to give up your hate for this other thing. And that goes with anything even beyond money. Yeah. It's like, do you love this person enough to let go of that offense? Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, man. Do you, forgiveness do you... is ooh. <laughs> <laughs> forgiveness is probably the uh one of the scariest currencies that we have as humans. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I mean think about it, like everything that we do is a currency, dude. Like we, you know, we exchange like favors, we exchange um um you know, jobs, we exchange like everything is a currency. We exchange uh time, you know, yeah. and uh and, you know, at the end of the day, I think one of our scariest currencies is forgiveness. But it's also, ironically enough, one of the most powerful. So Yeah, it's true. Why do you think it's so scary, man? Do you think it's pride? I feel like it's I feel like it's pride because they owe it to me to a party. Exactly. They should have yep. done this to me. And then it's like, if you would just let it go, yeah. you would not be better. It's good, dude. Um, I don't know. I think it's scary because um I think pride is a big piece of it. I think it's also scary because we, you know, um, we kind of somewhere deep down, I think, you know, we're not just punishing someone else. And we think that by, you know, un unforgiving or not forgiving them, we can punish them. But like, it's kind of this God complex. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's kind of like, mm -hmm. whatever, like, how dare you? Like, I'm, you know, something so much better than you, you know? And it's like, again, it goes back to just seeing people as people. You know, and yeah. like, um, I think really, you know, with my parents, especially, you know, kind of going back to that, like, and forgiveness in my own life, I think that um, it took me seeing my parents and and there were some pretty awful things in our family, you know, growing up and everything, but um, seeing my parents as humans and understanding they're trying to do the best that they could with the information that they had at that time yeah. helped me just be like, wow, they I have trying. grace for them. You know, I was yeah. talking with a friend the other day That's and so good, uh, her dad, like just, it was horrible, dude. Her dad, like um, they would like call him and be like, hey, are you coming to like our birthday party or whatever, her and her sister. And her dad would just, you know, be like, no, I don't have time, you know, whatever, and never show up and like all this stuff. And he was just never, ever there. And there was some real like deep, deep hurts there. You know, we were just talking about the power of realizing that a person is a person and they are trying to like figure it out just like you. 
And that doesn't excuse it. That will never excuse it. But it gives you grace to understand that, well, if I was them and if Mm -hmm. I had the same circumstances, would I really have made a different decision? Yeah. You know? And I mean, that can apply in anything, like in any area. You know, it's like whether it's, it's, a business decision that you didn't agree with, whether it's a, a you know um, a manager or a boss who made a decision that you didn't agree with, yeah. you know, it's like you just got to look at them and be like, you know what? They had a lot of extenuating circumstances that maybe I don't see. Mm-hmm. And they made the best decision that they knew how. Nobody's going to purposely be like, I'm going to make a bad decision because um, I feel like it today, you know, especially if yeah. it like costs thousands of dollars or if it hurts their children or easier. You know I'm saying like yeah. it doesn't work like that. And Mm-mm. people generally speaking, do the best they can with what they have. And if you yeah. just look at that, like, yeah, like, it's like my biggest thing for this year is like we're all trying. Every person is trying so and, good and trying to have empathy for every person that yeah. I come across. Good. And knowing like they are doing the best with what they have in the situation they are. Yeah. In. You know what I mean? And and honestly, like really living out the fact that you don't get offended. Yeah. You take offense. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you take it. Sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they don't give it to you. You go out there and you grab it and you say, I'm choosing to be offended and just choosing to not be that. And I think that's where a lot of people struggle with. A lot of us yeah. humans in general, like having empathy for someone else. Sure. Because I feel like it's because of selfishness because you know, yeah. I would have never done that. Yeah. I this and that. Yeah. Well, think about what you have done. Yeah. You know True. what I mean? And if what you haven't done, think about what you have thought about people. But you know what gets rid of that? Um, you know what gives you empathy and gets rid of that offense is giving. <laughs> everything, dude, everything is about, That's again, it's, so it's just a currency. It's a matter of, you know. You're such a beast. You're sacrificing, <laughs> you're, you're sacrificing your your feelings in order to give something that you had to someone else that you were offended by or yeah. from. And at the end of the day, like, you know, if you're offended by a church, I dare you to give to the church because giving is one of the most powerful forces that we yeah. have as humans. Giving anything, like I, I'm talking money, time, you know, whatever, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter because at the Even end of the day- encouraging words. It's a sacrifice. Yeah. And that's what Christ did, you yeah. know? And so at the end of the day, it's like, you know, if you find a lot of offense or you find a lot of, you're just angry and you, you haven't, you know, go give it. To, it doesn't have to be to the person. Just start mm-hmm. giving to other people and your heart will soften so fast Go find homeless people. You realize how many homeless people there are in Dallas? Yeah, I do. Do you realize? But not even that. Right here in Allen. Do you realize how many families right here that you know? You know, I was talking to my wife the other day, and I was like, you know what? I was like, we're doing this thing with the company, you know, where we're giving away, like we're paying for rent and we're paying for groceries and all this. And uh, I was like, you know, we found two people that we knew that have reached out to us needing needing wow. something like needing rent or in needing, our circle. Yeah, yeah yeah and i'm like i i sat there and i thought and i was like if there's two people in our circle that are willing to come to us imagine how many aren't yeah. that still need it yeah, because of pride because circle. of whatever and yeah, it's nice. like you know i love that churches do missions i love that we you know as christians go all around the world but you know what breaks my heart is that there are people that yeah, walk in that building every single day they yeah. can't eat lunch. They can't go out and buy groceries for their family. They can't pay rent. They yeah. can't. My family was that, you know, like yeah. we we were there. Like we didn't get Christmas, you know, yeah. we didn't get like anything like that. Like there were weeks where it's like we couldn't pay rent. We couldn't pay for groceries. And like, you know, there are people right next door to you. And it's like, you don't have to go far to give. Yeah. You know, there are people part of this company, you know, part of church base. Yeah. You know, that need money and need help and need time and need friends and need all of that. Because at yeah. the end of the day, we're all human and we're all yeah. doing the best we can with what we've got. But at the end of the day, when you give, you break all that pride down. You break down. It's like breaking down a muscle. It's like you just yeah. crush that pride. You crush yeah. that resentment when you and then give. It gets stronger. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dude, that is awesome. That's so good. That is so freaking good. Um, switching over now into like 
business because I kind of want to see where all of this ties into business because you're a huge business dude, huge um, money. money guy, not in a not in a bad way. Um, if people hear that and they're like, oh, Christian money, man. But no, like you have a good, you have, you try right building mindset. a church without money. Yeah. Yeah. You try <laughs> doing anything, anything without yeah, money. True, like, man. How are you going to bless someone with a car? Yeah. Are you going to bless someone with a meal? Yeah. Without five bucks. You know what yeah. I mean? So I'm curious. You don't have to answer it if you don't want to, but how many businesses do you have? Good question. <laughs> um, I plead the fifth. <laughs> I have about five or six. Okay. And I say that because at the end of the day, um, one or two of them aren't really, you know, like official companies. So they're yeah. more like projects. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as far as like official companies, probably about five. Um, Dang. That's amazing. What was, what was, uh, what was your first one and what was the scariest risk that you had to take to start that? I love it. That's a really good question. I know it is. Um, my first company was uh, computer repair because I uh, helped my brother build motherboards back in high school. And so- <laughs> You are a nerd, right? <laughs> Dude, you have no idea. I, I brushed That's it off, amazing. but like, uh, I helped him like fix motherboards at his little, uh, his computer repair place. And so um, at the time, this was after graduation, I um, obviously needed money. And uh, I, I hate working at nine to five jobs. Like to me- mm -hmm. I would rather give you anything in the entire wide world. Like I would rather sell anything I have except for my time, you know, because yeah. a nine to five is you're literally saying here is one hour of my time and my time is only worth $12 an hour. Yeah. And the only thing you will never, ever get back is time. time. And so at the end of the day, when I separated my mindset from nine to five, like I got to get a paycheck and I said, well, wait a minute, what if I could make more? than what most people make in an hour and not have to worry about it. Or what even if I could make money without doing anything, you know, if I could spend an hour and make 10 hours worth of money, I was like, I'm buying back time essentially. Yeah. And I'm oh, buying wow. back the that's most, a good way to think about it. The most important thing in the world. And that's, you know, so, um, when I, you know, needed money and everything, I was like, okay, so I start you know, uh, talking to friends, you know, people in the church and everything. And I, um, found people that needed their computers fixed and stuff like that. And so I started doing that, um, hated it. Absolutely hated it. Uh, it was, I, what I loved about it was, um, what I loved about it was the ability to set your own price mm. instead of somebody saying, Hey, I'll pay you X amount for this. Yeah. You said, Hey, it costs this much. And it was like, if I'm being honest, it was a bit of like a power rush because you're like, wow, like, I can set my own value, yeah. but I feel like everybody should, you know, should have that mentality. And I, I told my wife once, I was like, you know, you are responsible for what you're paid. And, yeah. you know, because I've had people that walk in my office and I probably shouldn't say this because I'm sure the employees will, uh, will watch this, but I've had people, um, uh, walk into the office and, you know, they're like, Oh, you know, I like, I asked them like, how much do you want to get paid? And they're like 12 bucks an hour or something like that. Yeah. And I was planning on 16. Yeah, it's true. And I'm like, it's your fault that you didn't negotiate. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so like at the end of the you day. You sold yourself short. Oh, yeah, 100%. And like, I'm not a bad person. Like I've helped them, people work up to certain things. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, I think that first company, company, um, it was called the Bodner Creative. And uh, it, it taught me a little bit about just negotiating and then i got addicted and i read every single book i could possibly read about business and i started my second company which was like a i just kind of fizzled out the computer repair stuff because it just wasn't like it was too much manual work for not enough like uh, return on investment so yeah, then i you're started pretty much you worked yourself into your own nine to five pretty exactly much. and mm -hmm. so then from there i started a um like web design and marketing company I knew nothing about web design. I have I had never touched any line of code, nothing. And yeah. so I just Googled it and I watched YouTube videos and I learned as much as I could. And I sold my first website for like, it's like 500 bucks. But it mm -hmm. took me, my first website took me about 30 minutes to build. And I was wow. like, I just made $500 in 30 minutes. And I was like, I can do this 10 wow. times this. Yeah. So I went from like making these websites over a few years from, you know, like 30 minute websites that, you know, 500 bucks 
to $20,000 websites that took me a day. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like, I was like, I just detached my, you know, time from my value. And that's the problem is my value comes in my, becomes from my knowledge, not from my time. And so you, you want access to my knowledge and you have to have my time. But the difference is, is that I can produce a product, you know, no matter what I do for, you know, if everything in my life fell apart right now, like I still have knowledge and I can take that knowledge and I can still charge for that knowledge. Yeah. That's so good. That's really good. Cause it's true, man. Like even me, like I make videos, you know what I mean? And sometimes you give a price, which is a fair price. And they're like, but you're not doing that much work. You don't know that first. You don't know the years that you took learning how to edit, learning how to change. You know, it's funny because in nine to fives, a lot of people, when they bring the resume in, what you're paying for is not their experience. You're paying for their education. You're paying for the fact, which, you know, at the end of the day kind of is a little frustrating because it's like, well, you know, I want real world experience. And that's, you know, at the end of the day, like Mm -hmm. you're paying for some, the time that that person stuck into, you know, like video, if it was that, if you don't want to pay that, you go learn how to do videos. You know, you go learn how to, you go buy the software and learn how to do video editing. So yeah, yeah, that's true. Do you think it's shifting? I think it's shifting. What's shifting? From everyone hiring based off education to actual experience. Oh yeah. I, I think I think there's a shift happening because there's been yeah. so so much saturation of education, yeah. but not experience. Like book, book smart's smart. way different than getting in there and grinding. That's you know true. Like, like anybody, I, can, yeah. <laughs> like dude, I used to watch boxing all the time. Yeah, I used to watch UFC fights all the time. Yeah. like any MMA, and then I started training, yeah. and that did not matter one bit until I got in there, and I started bleeding and sweating yeah. and throwing everything myself. Yes. And so I feel like business wise, that's what people want. 100%. Now yeah. it's like, I want to know that you know what it's like to take a blow, yeah. to, to give a blow, and to keep pushing past it. Because if you just know about it yeah. and then you come against your first wall, are you, you going to stop at that wall or are you going to keep? Frankie, it's like building your leg muscles and then going to an arm wrestling match. Yeah. yeah. That's what it is because yeah. knowledge is powerful and yes. it's important to gain knowledge, uh, whether you're going to go to school, even though. I think college is dead, but whether you're going to go to school (laughs) or whether you're going to go read a million books, you know, Mm -hmm. and gain your education that way, either way, you're reading a million books. So you you might as well either pay for someone to sit there and explain to you how to read a million books or go do it yourself. But, um, oh, bro, bro, you're you're the the perfect (laughs) example of that because you went to YouTube to learn how to code. Yeah. You learned all, there's people that go to school and get in debt to do that. You oh, yeah. learned it and grinded on your own. Yeah, yeah you, you turned can, it into the something. The thing is, is like you can, you can go get an MBA, but I'm not gonna hire you if you have an MBA. I'm gonna hire you when you've ran your own company, you know? Yeah. And at the end of the day, <laughs> you're true. 100% right because it's so different when you get in there. There is deep rooted things like you are a person and a yeah. book will not teach you that. Yeah. And so like there are decisions you have to make in business that are not going to be in your MBA. And I don't think that it's, you know, an MBA is great. Like, but I've never once, like none of my friends that own businesses have ever gotten MBAs. They're the people that run their companies are the ones that got MBAs, which wow. is awesome. You know, we which need those great. people. Yeah. Like there's every, the Bible says every piece of the body has a purpose. Yeah. But, but at the end of the day, the MBAs weren't the ones running the company. Yeah. That's, 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 that's interesting. That's interesting, but, but it, it kind of makes sense though. Yeah, if if we're being honest, because you have these dudes that said, "I'm gonna work for my own, mm-hmm. I'm gonna build my own," and they do. Then you have these other people that say, yeah. "I'm gonna get a good education to get hired." Yes, yeah, and 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 that's that's it's two different goals, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not neither one is better, better than the other. Yeah, it's just different. Do you know? I think the separating factor is like the ability to deal with fear, and that's like. Good. The, so good because at the end of the day you know people ask me all the time like i need help making a decision like how do you make a decision and like i have one rule for decision making and i probably should have more than that but it scares the crap out of you do it. exactly That's because so at the end of the day god doesn't give you fear the devil gives you fear and if you're yeah. scared out of it or scared of it exactly he doesn't want mm-hmm. you to do it not just that but if you end up doing it what's going to happen after that you know and when you 
just go and every time it's like a giant red light directing you where you want to go because it's like oh i'm scared of this let's go over here you know oh, i'm scared of this let's go over here <laughs> and at the end of the day i think fear like stop so many people it's the root of perfectionism it's the root of like yeah you know because you're scared that something is going to be good enough or yeah. something like that and it's like there have been so many times where like i've wanted to spend all this time on one thing or like you know but like i'm scared that it's not going to succeed or whatever and mm -hmm. it's like you just just put it out there yeah you know just yeah, put just, it out just there. start that's why you see a lot of people that are the the number one guy a lot of them are doers mm -hmm. so they, they take the risk immediately yeah like they're like I have a vision. Yeah. Like you've heard my concept behind the rhino vision. Love it. You, you can only see five, seven feet in front of you. Yeah. But your goal is a hundred yards, but you still charge a thousand percent. Yeah. So you have the doers yeah. that say, I'm getting after it. And then you have the planners yeah. who need everything to be perfect. Yeah. And for, in my opinion, a doer starts it and leads it. And, and then a you doer, bring the planner yes, with you. Yes. It's so true because there's so many, like you can't do anything great without people. Ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you will never, you know, I have this rule in my, uh, like, you know, you might think, oh, five companies, like, uh, takes all your time. And it doesn't because I have this rule with business where it's like 51% of my effort and my mental capacity will only go to one thing. And so oh, wow. there's the majority of my effort and capacity will always be like monopolized with a single thing and if you've ever read a book um uh, one thing i can't remember who wrote it but it's phenomenal about most successful people in the world just focus on one thing at a time and everything and so if i ever start something else i'm not the one that's going to run that someone else is going to wow. run that and so you all you have to have people so in every mm -hmm. single venture that i have it's someone else is taking that and running with it and mm -hmm. i'm there to help guide them and help you know instruct and all of that and so at the end of the day like you will never be able to do this yeah. do anything you know without yeah. people you yeah. have to have people which is why you know it's so important going all the way back to like understanding people and understanding that you have to treat you know the janitor with the exact same respect as yes. yes and it's like it's so your life will change when you decide that people are your biggest asset in life. Dude, that is so good. That is, I want to keep going, but it's 2.30. You, you got to roll, right? <laughs> no, let's go. Let's keep okay. going, dude. Okay, this good, is fun. Good, good, good. Yeah. Chop it up to whatever. Yeah, I, I really like this. I really like this. Yeah, dude, that's so true. So even with your other businesses, because initially, would you say your biggest risk was the first one? And then after that, it got easier? No. That's the, it that's kept right. getting harder. So... It's, it's very different when you, it's just you and you, um, you know, have a hundred bucks in your bank account and you decide I'm going to go pay for a sponsored ad on Craigslist, you know, to find somebody to make a website for and turn that hundred dollars into a thousand dollars. Yeah. It's very, very different from that perspective where there's like almost no risk involved whatsoever because mm -hmm. it's like you're sacrificing a hundred bucks, you know, to yeah. make a thousand. Like it's a very surefire you know way to go um and not that freelancing is easy because freelancing is hard but at yeah. the end of the day that kind of risk compared to the risk when it's like you're married you're trying to have children you're you know trying to have a steady lifestyle for your wife yeah. you're trying you know and you're not you're no longer talking about hundreds of dollars you're talking about hundreds of thousands if not millions of dollars and in lives risk. and lives because when you start that's such a good point because when you start hiring people you are now responsible for putting food on that person's table yep and it's very 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 different than yeah. just yourself like i know yeah. a lot of entrepreneurs and they're just them you yeah. know it's just and and i i love it like yeah. to be honest i, I, I would go back yeah. <laughs> but, but it's there's nothing that compares in the entire world to walking in on a monday morning and seeing you know 12 people that like are all part of something bigger, a vision that, you know, God gave you and that you're putting together and like, yeah. and you know, there's an obscene amount of responsibility in that. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's like, that's the real risk is when you start messing with other people's lives. You know? Yeah, dude, it's so true. And it, it does get harder because I remember when I started uh, my, my trucking company, it was like, it was, it was just me at first, right? And then I was like, you know what? I'm making about five grand a week. I want to make a little more. You know what I mean? And then I was really good at getting work because I could talk to I could talk to the 
sophisticated white male that ran the business. And you're I very talk- good at talking for me. <laughs> <laughs> you're very good at talking. <laughs> and, and I could talk to the the Mexicans yeah. that were building houses and yeah. stuff like that. Bro, my first clients that I ever got, I kid you not, it's, hopefully I don't get in trouble for this, but I was I'm driving a, a semi truck, right? A dump truck, a commercial vehicle, and I have 30 packs of Modelo in there with me going to these houses, bro. And I jump off with the 30 pack, give it to the guys. They start chopping it. it up, drinking. And then I'm like, if you guys need sand, let me know. Dude, and of course they called me. But then, so when it was just me, it was fun. It was fun. Yeah. I was like, oh, work. I could take three days off and yeah. whatever. But then when I started bringing in like some of my uncle's trucks, some of these other dudes' trucks, I was running like 10 trucks at one point that weren't even mine. And they were all calling me. Hey man, do you got work tomorrow? Hey man, do you got work? Hey man, and that is where the nights of grind that I got home at five, six o'clock from work, and then I worked until like eleven o'clock finding work for the next day and for the day after that because they were dependent on me. So it's true, like it gets heavier the more that you grow. So for everyone who that's like thinking like, oh, I want to start a business, I want to do something, and they think the first risk is it. It's honestly, it's, it's even, it's even after, you know, like it's not even like as at bigger, 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 bigger. It's like when, when one project finishes or one company, you know, sells or whatever. And then, you know, you're like, am I about to do this again? Because there's a certain sense of naivety in the beginning mm. that kind of blinds you to yeah. the real risks of what you're doing. And then yeah. like later on, you're like, do I do I just want to go back to McDonald's and you know flip <laughs> burgers or like because yeah. <laughs> at the end of the day there are days, bro. There are days yeah. that it's like. But you know what? What I thought was cool that you said um, your entire company started with giving because you gave these guys like those, oh, yeah. you know. And like at the end of the day, it's like if That's anybody good. ever wants to start something, you got to give. You have to, and at the end, it, like you have to give what you want back essentially yeah. and you know like when i was doing marketing and advertising when i first started that i gave away contracts like in the beginning because i was like just refer me just refer me just refer me yeah and, and when i did uh web design and advertising outside of the very first two clients i got every single person was referral wow. every single i never did advertising for that and i lived on that for you know good four years and wow. so like it was just because it was all about reciprocity it was, yeah. it, and there's actually a law like in business called the law of reciprocity. And when you give something some something to someone, like it shuts down the receptors in their brain that think they're being sold. So wow, <laughs> that's really good. That's, that's fun stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> learning, learning new stuff, stuff every single day. day. Jeez, yeah. man. Okay, okay so, so then, then what, what would you say, say your biggest challenges have been mentally, internally, um, re- operating the businesses? That's a good question. I need to think about that. Um, I think the biggest challenge um, mentally has been comparison Mm. and getting out of the, you know, looking at competitors and being like, you know, we need to beat them and, you know, we need to crush them. And there's a, there's a fun sense of competition and there's a dangerous sense of competition. Yeah. And when you, um, when you obsess over, uh just being better and being you know there's a difference between like such a fine line man there's such a difference between obsessing over being a better company and a better person and obsessing over like we need to be better than this person Mm -hmm. and so you know there's a always comparing the difference is always comparing yourself to yourself and always comparing yourself to someone else and so you know i think um in business my biggest mistake or my biggest like you know like battle mentally would be always comparing my company to other companies and you know being like we're not there you don't know their path you know you don't know where they've been you don't know how they got there you don't you know it's just like we've been talking this entire time about people like you do not know what price they paid to be where they're at and are you willing to pay that same price yeah Yeah. and so sometimes you know it's you just kind of have that like mental check of like, you know what, like I'm where I'm at and this is the road I chose. And this Mm -hmm. is, you know, um, the decisions I made led me here. But, you know, I often feel like uh, I joke to my friends. I tell them that, um, you know, church base is my, uh, (laughs) 
it's my uh, master's degree <laughs> because <laughs> you're learning. Yeah, I, I dropped out of college, so I, I don't have any degree. And so like yeah. dropped out of Bible college. And so, um, <laughs> and uh, story for another day. But you know, it's bad, bad when you drop out of Bible Dude, college. it's <laughs> exactly. But, uh, you know, it's like, like we were talking about just real life experience, a difference. But, but I think that yeah. would have been probably my biggest mental and then mental clarity. Um, I think there's a big difference between time and mental capacity mm-hmm. and kind of going back to what I was saying, like with the the 51%, you, you know, that's not 51% of your time is dedicated to one thing. That's 50% of your mental capacity. I think a lot of people, they mm-hmm. think, do I have the financial resources? Do I have the time resources? And they forget about mental capacity. Yeah. And the problem is, is that whether you're actively working on something or not, it is taking a, a spot in your mind. And at the end of the day, the clearer you can keep that and, you know, the clearer, think of your mind as like a, I don't know, dude, I'm trying to think of a good example, but like, a, mm-hmm. you know, a sand, a sand pod and it's like every, or a, uh, you know, those sand glasses, yeah. every, you know, um, thing that you work on is like a tiny bit more of sand or everything that in your life is a tiny bit more sand. You have to keep this empty space. Otherwise, you don't have the capacity to solve the problems for the other part. And so wow. that's why 51% of my capacity is reserved you know, capacity, I sound like a yeah. robot, but uh, it's just <laughs> reserved for my number one project, which right now is church based. So, yeah. yeah. So that's like your focus right now. And that's what it should be for anyone who's like trying to like build something. Like, for example, me, like I obviously want to build like my podcast as well. So whenever I'm working on my podcast, that needs to be the isolated thing that I'm working on type of thing, yes. right? Even 100%. if it's not like financially or anything like that, just mentally get even it. Would you say even if it's like, on one day set apart five hours and just focus on that would would that be like a good example i mean it it depends it It really depends on like your lifestyle you know are you married do you have kids do you have this do you have that and so i think it's more of a mindset i think you really have to change your mindset to like you know um i I think at the end of the day what you feed grows and so you know you have to change your mind to to uh feed you know, and, and it all starts here. You mm-hmm. know, this, all of this happened because it all started here. That's true. And so if all you ever do is work off that single seed and you never let that seed grow, then all it'll ever be is this. And wow. so you really have to like mentally give space, you know, go meditate, go take a break, go whatever. You have to mentally give space to make let this idea keep growing and keep expanding and, you know, um, you know, and at the end of the day, like that could look like, you know, it could look like time. It could look like, you know, you, like I said, just putting off an hour a day, you know, whatever mm. it looks like in your situation, it all starts here. Yeah. And, and your what you think is what you become and where, yeah. what, where you think is where you go. And so at the end That's of the really day, good. you know, because where you think is what you see and what you see is where you go. And so at the end mm. of the day, if you, um, if you start with just, dedicating a certain amount of t- time every single day to just mm-hmm. empty your mind, think about this project and let that seed grow, then mm-hmm. it'll become more and more and more. And out of yeah. that will birth, oh, I have this extra time. I can do this. I can. You will automatically separate and dedicate yeah. and do what you need to do because it all started here. Yeah. You let that take root. Yeah, that's really good because I was going to say that's that's probably difficult for anyone that's listening that has a job that has a real life with things that are going on is like, I can't just shut down and just focus on one thing right now because I wouldn't be able to live. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like, you know what? Like, and this is probably the worst piece of advice that I have, but like, um, I, I've always just told people just do it. Like, because I hate plan B and we've, I've talked about this so many times and I've had very, very wise people think that I'm wrong and that's that's fine like I uh, I'm wrong about so much but I hate plan B and the reason I hate plan B is because if you have a plan B plan A doesn't have to work and so it's not my job to have plan plan B it's my manager's job yeah. it's my you know it's it's the yeah. the accountants it's all of the people that you know I hired like you said to yeah. come alongside you and, and plan yeah. those people it's their job yeah. but if you're going to found something can't have a plan yeah, b because then you're, you're just fail. plan to fail exactly and at the mm-hmm. end of the day it's like 
I know that you have to hustle on the side in order mm -hmm. to get things paid and everything. But if there is a way to monetize what you are doing, yeah. you know, right now today, and the only like there is a, a friend of mine, he uh, he made the coolest um, uh, bow ties and everything, awesome bow ties. And like I always told him, I was like, bro, like quit your job and do these because it's something yeah. that you can physically sell and you mm -hmm. can replace your income. And here's the thing is hunger does a lot for somebody. And when you don't have and you are forced when you have to pay that bill. And this mm -hmm. is this is the total like crazy risk, you know, person talking. But at the end of the day, like that's that's how I started was I was like, you know what? I have to do like I have to pay bills. I have to. Yeah. Eat. So this has to work, you know, because I don't want to go get a job. Yeah. And sometimes it worked and sometimes it does. It didn't. But, you know, and everybody's situation is different. So please don't exactly. take that no. advice and just go like, <laughs> <laughs> mom, I'm quitting my, you know, yeah. my job. And <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that's so good, though, man. I think that's huge for anyone to listen to. Like, you have to get at it no matter what you're doing. You know what I mean? But I love what you said that everyone thinks I don't have the finances to do that. I don't have the time to yeah. do that. It's like, well, do you have the mental capacity? Mm. Yep. Can you set that yes. aside? Can, yes. Can Start. you instead of instead of going to the restroom for thirty minutes and your job to just sit on your phone and scroll Instagram? Yes. Can you just sit there and think, dude? Okay, where am I gonna go? What do I want? If do? you're gonna start a business, the best thing for you to do is delete Facebook, Instagram, all of that because all that is is comparison. Yeah. yeah. Delete it all. Yeah. Get off your laptop. Go get a notebook and go sit. Because yeah. your brain is so much more powerful than you will ever imagine. And yeah. you're and let God download those ideas. Let God yeah. give you those concepts. Let God just separate. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like everybody's got an idea, but very ideas are a dime a dozen, you know? Mm -hmm. But people that actually pursue those ideas and yeah. go out and do something with those ideas, that that's when it becomes valuable. I know? think those people automatically are ahead of the game, even if they don't make it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like anyone who has an idea and takes one step forward yeah. and starts moving towards it, in my eyes, already has my respect. It's like the gym showing up is half the game, dude. Yeah. So. Yeah. Literally, like the people that show up at the gym, they're already 10 times better than the person that wants to go. I love it. Dude. And says, I'll start on Monday. I'll start tomorrow. Tomorrow never arrives. It's always today. You gotta I'm start. Like, and it's, it's all mental. The first step is mental. And like, yeah, dude. Yeah. You just gotta start. So what is, uh, to close out, what would be one encouraging word that you would give to someone or encouraging statement? Um, um that's a good question. Just one. <laughs> or a couple, that's fine. <laughs> I'm not good at just like one thing. <laughs> um, I really think that at the end of the day, you know, get up use what's happened to you you know throughout your life and let it drive you let god teach you hear from the lord like even if you're not a christian like just sit you know if you don't think that god exists or you know whatever just sit you know because god's going to reveal himself in more ways than you think you know we were created to create and you will find god in the mere fact that your brain creates and that you're sitting there and you're like, wow, where did that come from? I wonder, you know? And That's it's so like good. God spoke the heavens and the earth into existence and it, it, it was with a voice. And I would say that the second step is when you do have that idea and you have that capacity and it's, you've let it kind of take root, speak it, start speaking wow. it. Because it's like you are the creation of God and uh, you were created in his image and you're the Imago Dei. And at the end of the day, I truly believe that um, when you speak something, it happens. And yeah. you have so much more authority than you think you have. And uh, and then step out and do it. Like, it's hard and it sucks sometimes. Like, business is not an easy thing. Um, not, you know, any idea, creating any sort of dream is not easy. But yep. um, just do it. And get out there and surround yourself with amazing people because that will that is the only thing that'll get you through. The minute that it all comes crashing down and you're bawling your eyes out in the fetal position, there's nobody around. It's the worst moment of your entire life. Yeah. You know? 
and just surround yourself with dedicated, passionate people that will are better than you. If you're, yeah. you know, they say it all the time. Like if you're the smartest person in your circle, you're in the wrong circle. Yeah. And you know, I, I think I would just tell everybody you can do it. Like a hundred percent, you can do it. And you know, you'll look back and you'll be thankful that you did. Yeah. You'll be very thankful. Think about anything that you've done that was hard. It was the most rewarding things you'll ever do is the things that are true. hard. So it's very true. And give. give Just a lot. give, 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 give. Give is the secret to building anything and giving because giving is the most powerful force in the world. And it keeps you humble. It keeps people coming back. It like it. Uh, there's so much to be said about people that just give, you yeah. know, and that's the most important thing that you can do as a person and as an entrepreneur or freelancer, you know, whatever it is that you're working towards. So, yeah. dude, that's awesome, man. Well, that's it, bro. I love it, man. That's good. It. Did you have fun? Yeah, it's good, dude. How long was that? Good lord. <laughs>